I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the RSI Mantis and we're starting right now. Welcome to Robert Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. Special thanks to all the support from patrons and channel members. It takes a while to make one of these and your support is greatly appreciated. I'm live right now. Head over to Twitch to hang out and give me your thoughts on the Mantis. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. This is Subliminal here and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the RSI Mantis. In this review, I'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, show you how to activate its snare, spoiler alert, it doesn't work, show you an effective way to use its dampener, compare stats with similar ships, review pros and cons, and give you my thoughts on the Mantis. If you haven't seen it already, after this review, check out my loadout guide for the Mantis in the info card above and on the end screen. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The RSI Mantis is a single-seat interdiction ship capable of pulling targets out of quantum travel using its quantum enforcement. Lightly armed and armored, the Mantis is designed to work in tandem with more heavily armed law enforcement or pirates to confront the captured ships. Robert Space Industries is a multinational corporation that designs, manufactures, and sells spaceships, vehicles, ship components, and spacesuits. It is one of the oldest modern human spacecraft companies that stretches back all the way to when mankind's first stepped into the stars. Incorporated in 2038, RSI was responsible for the development of the quantum drive that ushered the colonization of the galaxy. As of today, the Mantis is available for sale and upgrade on the pledge store for $150. For owning the Mantis, you will receive an Aurora LN light fighter as a loaner. As of today, the Mantis is not available for sale in game nor for rent. Now that we know a little bit more about the Mantis, let's take a tour. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. As you can see, the Mantis has a beautiful white paint job. You can just tell here that the Mantis has a great view from the flight deck. Underneath, on each side, we have a size 3 hardpoint. FYI, this is not the stock loadout. I'll leave a link to my loadout guide on the end screen. Taking a step back, up top, we can just barely see the Mantis MSD-322 missile rack with two size 2 missiles. The starboard side has one as well. I'm a big fan of the aesthetics of the Mantis. Back here we can see its main thrusters. The starboard side is identical to the port side. Let's head inside. To enter into the Mantis, simply click this button. Then reach up and click this button or turn around to use the same one that we used before. As you can see, the cabin is pretty spacious. On the port side, we have the restroom. It's equipped with, you guessed it, a space shitter. And even a space bidet for you fancy folks. On this side, we also have a bed to log out in. On the starboard side, we have a food processor and a coffee maker. Next to this, we have two component housings and some monitors displaying some spaceship stuff. On the floor, we have another one, two, and three component housings. Let's head towards the flight deck. On each side, we have some spaceship stuff that doesn't seem to have any purpose. Let's have a seat. The pilot seat does have the new building blocks UI we should be seeing on all ships in 3.10. It also has four MFDs and a 3D radar. To our right, there is a button to turn on the QED. The Mantis does not have an ejection system. Let's take a look at how to use the snare. To make an effective trap, it is best to fly to the location from which you want to catch people and head towards a common destination. I've headed to Hurston and will be heading towards Crusader. I'll start the jump, 
I'll start the jump and then cancel it just after the entered UEE jurisdiction pops up. Now I'm safe to activate the snare without fear of getting a crime stat. Now let's turn on our QED. The back hatch will open up and glow red. Now that the QED is on, you can either activate the dampener that will prevent anyone from quantum traveling out, or you can charge the snare. Let's do that. You can see here the snare is charging. Once it is ready, you can either cancel the charge or initiate the snare. Let's initiate. Now your snare is activated. Anyone in quantum within a 20,000 mile radius will be snared. Well, once this mechanic is fully implemented in the game. As of right now, you cannot snare in the PU. If you'd like to see the results of me testing this, check out the link to this clip in the description. Now for the quantum dampener. I'm sure you can figure out how to activate it. What I want to show you is how to effectively use it to assist a fleet of pirates in the game's current state. Here's a clip from Captain Burks' stream from a few days ago. Pay attention to the mantis. You can't miss That's it. Fine. It's glowing red. We, we, all right. Yeah, tell him, come to a stop. You have 10 seconds to comply. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Oh, he's coming. No. Just a bit of lag. He's not stopping. All right, open fire. Flashbang. I have added a link to this clip from Burks' stream in the description. Be sure to check him out if you'd like to see more pirate gameplay. There he goes. All right. Now that we've taken a tour, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I've selected 10 ships, the Cutlass Blue, a Starter, Box Mission ships, and some E-Warfare ships. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. The RSI Mantis as well as the Pisces show to have zero mass in the game files. This could be why their atmospheric flight is so fast. It fits in at 30 meters in length and takes sixth place. It totes zero SCU of cargo and ties in last place. It has a max true size of one and ties in last again. It carries 583 quantum fuel units and you guessed it ties in last place. It cruises by with an SCM speed of 168 meters per second and takes eighth place. It blazes by with a max speed of 1220 and takes third place. It has a maximum pitch rate of 62 degrees per second and takes fourth place. It has a maximum yaw rate of 64 degrees per second and takes third. It has a maximum roll rate of 175 degrees per second and takes third place. It has a total hull HP of just over 6,800 and takes sixth place. It shoots peas with a default pilot DPS of just 750 and takes seventh place. The Mantis does not have a turret. It does have a combined missile payload of over 15,000 and takes 5th place. And the RSI Mantis is not available for sale in-game. This video is brought to you by my locations of Stanton Fan Art Series. There are four ways you can rock this collection. All viewers can download the mobile wallpapers for free. Desktop wallpaper versions are available to all patrons and channel members. Canvases and posters are available in the merch store and you can have them printed on metal from display. Flaunt your love for Star Citizen and support the channel while doing so. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. I would say its pros are, as far as metrics is concerned, it's very lightweight at zero kilograms. I'm sure this is a bug, but I'd be interested to see if they fix it in 310. Its max speed is pretty good, although I think it should be even faster as an interceptor. Now for some things that we can't see on paper. It has plenty of room for some passengers and mission boxes. It has amenities like beds to log out in, a toilet, food processor, and a coffee maker. And if you're considering this over Cuddy Blue, the Mantis is the only ship in the game with a quantum snare. Just remember, it doesn't work in 3.9. I'm hoping it will work in 3.10 since they gave it to us this month as a subscriber ship. Another great use for the Mantis is to run box missions because it's pretty quick in atmosphere. Also, not just in atmosphere, but in space, it's pretty nimble. Good pitch, yaw, and roll rates. It also stops on a dime. And it has a great view from the cockpit. For cons, I'd say its SCM speed is pretty slow, so even though it's fast, you'll be overworking it to get to those speeds. We'll have to see how things are affected in 3.10.
or even worse when full degradation comes in. These next couple of things are cons, but please note that they are to be expected for a singular focus ship like this, but I think they're still worth being mentioned. With only two size 3 hardpoints, you're not going to want to be engaging the targets that you snare. It is also pretty fragile, so again, avoid combat at all costs while you're alone. So what are my thoughts? Excluding the fact that its exclusive feature is not currently usable, I think the Mantis is perfect for the role at hand and there are a lot of things that are going great for it. But should you buy one? Well, let me tell you why you should. If you are looking to prevent Quantum for pirating reasons, it is one of two ships capable of doing this. Also, if you like running box missions, the ship's speed and handling an atmosphere is pretty good. But the latter is not a good enough reason to spend $150 on this ship. There are better box running ships at much lower prices. With that being said, the only reason to buy one is to assist a pirate fleet. Otherwise, your money is best spent elsewhere. Those are my thoughts, let me hear yours down in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my loadout guide for the Mantis here. And don't forget, I'm live on Twitch right now, like I mean right now, come on and hang out. If you enjoy my channel, there are five ways to support it. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can check out my locations of Stanton collection over at Displate and in the merch store. Number four, you can subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the circle here. And number five, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a channel member or even better, a patron. Some pledge perks can be seen here, including desktop versions of my locations of Stanton collection available to all patrons and members. If not, just sticking around to the end is greatly appreciated. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.